Behold the great priest who in his days pleased God. Therefore, in accordance with this promise, the Lord gave him growth for the good of his people. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Well, brothers and sisters, as we gather uh, on this Friday morning, uh, we celebrate the feast of St. Pius X, who had a, a great Eucharist, uh, Eucharistic devotion, sort of letting, uh, leading uh, young people to receive the Eucharist uh, so that uh, all things could be renewed in Christ. So as we come to this time and this place, we want our own hearts to be renewed in God's love. And so we turn to him in our need as we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, brothers and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who to safeguard the Catholic faith and restore all things in Christ, filled Saint, Pope Saint Pius X with heavenly wisdom and apostolic fortitude, graciously grant that following his teaching and example, we may gain an eternal prize. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The hand of the Lord came upon me and led me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me in the center of the plain, which was now filled with bones. He made me walk among the bones in every direction so that I saw how many they were on the surface of the plain, how dry they were, he asked me, Son of man, can these bones come to life? I answered, Lord God, you alone know that. Then he said to me, Prophesy over these bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, See, I will bring spirit into you that you may come to life. I will put sinews upon you, make flesh grow over you, cover you with skin, and put spirit in you, so that you may come to life and know that I am the Lord. I prophesied as I had been told, and even as I was prophesying, I heard a, a noise. It was a rattling as the bones came together, bone joining bone. I saw the sinews and the flesh come upon them, and the skin cover them, but there was no spirit in them. Then the Lord said to me, Prophesy to the Spirit, prophesy, Son of Man, and say to the Spirit, Thus says the Lord God, From the four winds come, O Spirit, and breathe into these slain, that they may come to life. I prophesied as he told me, and the Spirit came into them. They came alive and stood upright, a vast army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They have been saying, Our bones are dried up, our hope is lost, and we are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, O oh, my people, I will open your graves and have you rise from them and bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and have you rise from them. <laughs> 
O my people. I will put my spirit in you that you may live, and I will settle you upon your land. Thus you shall know that I am the Lord. I have promised, and I will do it, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, his love is everlasting. Give thanks to the Lord, his love is everlasting. Let the redeemed of the Lord say, those whom he has redeemed from the hand of the foe and gather from the lands, from the east and the west, from the north and the south. Give thanks to the Lord, his love is everlasting. They went astray in the desert wilderness, the way to an inhabited city they did not find. Hungry and thirsty, their life was wasting away within them. Give thanks to the Lord, his love is everlasting. They cried to the Lord in their distress. From their straits, he rescued them, and he led them by a direct way to reach an inhabited city. Give thanks to the Lord, his love is everlasting. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his mercy and his wondrous deeds to the children of men, because he satisfied the longing soul and filled the hungry soul with good things. Give thanks to the Lord, his love is everlasting. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Teach me your paths, my God. Guide me in your truth. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a scholar of the law, tested him by asking, Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest in the first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The whole law and the prophets depend on these two commandments. The Gospel of the Lord. So this morning we hear uh, this um, short little gospel uh, of Jesus giving uh, the commandments uh, of love, uh, of loving God and loving neighbor. It kind of begs the question, maybe have you, have you thought about this? Does God really need us to love him uh, and others? Well, not really. In a sense, you know, loving God himself, God is, uh, God is perfect. God is complete. God is, you know, being, absolute fulfillment. God doesn't need anything to be God. He is God. Well, why is it a commandment then to love? Commandment, that's something pretty significant, something important, something, uh, something necessary even. Why is it a commandment? Why does God command us to love him uh, if he himself does not need uh, love? Well, when we define love as Christians, we're talking about something specific. Jesus is talking about something specific as love in these commandments. Thomas Aquinas uh, defined love as willing the good of the other. In the sense that love isn't just uh, a feeling or a sentiment, something, of, something of, of the heart that we feel, but love is a choice. Love is doing something uh, that provides the best for 
whom we're loving. It involves sacrifice. You know, reaching out to someone uh, in need, sacrificing of our own time to give. Love means even having a hard conversation with someone uh, because we know uh, that they need to be led uh, in a different direction. When it comes to God, sacrificing some of our time to devote to a life uh, of prayer, avoiding sin so that we can receive him more deeply in our lives. While God doesn't need us to love him, we need us to love God. Because as we love God, our hearts uh, are transformed. We increase our own capacity uh, to receive grace, God's life uh, and love. Love is what you know, gives uh, life and flesh uh, to our bones, like we hear about uh, in Ezekiel in the first reading. You know, God didn't create us just to be uh, a, a pile of dry bones. But bone uh, with flesh is bone that knows real life. And that is living a life uh, of selfless uh, love uh, for God and others. So brothers and sisters, how are we called to, to love, uh, to will uh, the good of others, and to show our, our deep love for God uh, today? Who is who uh, in particular has maybe been on our mind, uh, been in our heart that we need to reach out to? What can we do, uh, a part of our spiritual lives, to show uh, God that we love him, that we want a deeper relationship with him? May our hearts today be transformed certainly by uh, the Eucharist, Jesus' own body, blood, soul, and divinity, so that we can love as God has called us to love today. We bring our knees and our petitions before our Heavenly Father, that all members of the Church <clears throat> may be refreshed in faith by the same life-giving Spirit that emboldened Pope St. Pius X, whom we celebrate today. Let us pray to the Lord. That those who exercise authority in our world may be blessed with wisdom and compassion. Let us pray to the Lord. That those suffering from depression, grief, or hopelessness may experience the healing power of God. Let us pray to the Lord. For all of our second graders who received uh, Jesus in the Eucharist uh, uh, this year, and those who will receive it, and may they be strengthened uh, in their spiritual lives to receive God more deeply and to walk with him. Let us pray to the Lord. That those who have died may experience the new life promised by Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. And for all the personal intentions we hold in our hearts and bring to this Mass. And for, for Barbara Girl, for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, you know us and you love us. We ask you to hear and answer our prayers and petitions that be in accord with your will and be in your time. For we ask them through Christ our Lord. <clears throat> Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, where through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours might be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive with kindness our oblations, and grant, O Lord, we pray, that following the teachings of Pope St. Pius, we may celebrate these divine mysteries with sincere reverence, and receive them in a spirit of faith. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of Saint Pope Pius, you bid your church rejoice. And so, too, you strengthen her by the example of his holy life. Teach her by his words of preaching and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith we proclaim your death, O Lord. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that we're taking of the body and blood of Christ. We may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, and with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, 
or the blessed Joseph for his spouse, or the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the Supper of the Lamb. The Good Shepherd has laid down his life for his sheep. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Celebrating the memorial of Pope St. Pius, we pray, O Lord our God, that by the power of this heavenly table, we may be made constant in the faith and, one, uh, and be one uh, according in your love. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.